Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today, what a journey this is. We are going with my dear friends, and you all know I only talk to dear friends, my dear friends, Leon and Malia, and we are going to see a 40-year journey <laughs> with these two. In fact, I was just talking to Leon and Malia. When I first met you, my children were little, and you were doing the concerts at the zoo. Yes. So oh you goodness. know how long that's been. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, yes. Aloha. Oh, we are yes. so it's excited to, to be, be here, here today. Yes. yes. It has been. So you've been on a wonderful journey. Yes. Yes. 40 years of this mm -hmm. or more. More, yes. Well, you're counting for we're, ce we're celebrating certain um, landmarks right here as 40 years, but uh, we started way before that. Yes. yes. So mm -hmm. we have a beautiful little piece about all of those 40 years. All right. And let's see what 40 years looks like. Welcome to Backstory, the musical journey of Leon and Malia. Award-winning duo Leon and Malia has been part of Hawaii's music scene for over 40 years, composing and performing a wide range of music in Hawaii and around the world. In this special series, we'll be hearing the fascinating backstories behind their amazing journeys in music from Waikiki to the London Symphony, from the momentous triumphs of Hokulea to the Hawaiian cultural renaissance. And we're back. Was that the Hokulea? Yes, um, that we were involved in that. But what you saw in this trailer is, is the beginning uh, introductory part of our new show called Backstory, which is on Olelo. Oh. And we, mm -hmm. it's a 12 part series. Uh, so we're down to the last few parts right now um, mm -hmm. that has been running all year. And it, it focuses on various aspects of our career. We take season by season, and we have some that are focusing on what we do with um, children, like you were mentioning when we've been at the zoo and other, other places like that. Um, and the so, videos we've done for children and mm -hmm. yeah, all the songs that are in the schools right now um, or ha have been for the last 30 years in schools. So um, we, that's a whole part of our, our activity was to do music for children, Hawaiian-friendly, Hawaiian educational, um, music for children. Well, that's mm -hmm. right. Very yeah. family friendly and um, very benchmark so we can meet certain DOE national and Hawaii benchmarks as far as um, the type of, of song they're talking, singing about, since we're talking about children. Um, as you know, we are always involved with environment, sustainability, and responsibility. And culture. And culture. And so, nature. Mm -hmm. So now you mentioned Hawaii. Are the songs in Hawaiian? Some Since of them you are, are Hawaiian. Yes, mm -hmm. some of them are in Hawaiian uh, or or a mixture of Hawaiian and English, uh, but they've become really anthems for many of our our schools. Uh, they have adopted the songs as their school anthem. Oh, really? And things like that. Yeah. Well, for example, the one song called the Ohana song is sung in every school in the entire state. Most of them have adopted it as an anthem for their school because we talk about three values. Mm -hmm. and that's ohana, family, mm -hmm. and the other one is lokahi, which is harmony, mm -hmm. and the third is aloha. And with those three, which, is, which are principles we're teaching to our children, that those three are so important to us as a family. So, so they have a recording of it, or do they just... Now they just sing. We do sort of everything. Uh, we have DVDs and CDs of the songs that we do. So most of the schools have that in their library for their teachers' use. And uh, then, uh, for instance, we, we see thousands of school children a year in live concert. So prior to coming to their school, they will learn certain songs. And then when we go, and there's 600 of them in the auditorium or in their cafeteria, you know, we all sing that song. Mm -hmm. It's a big sing-along, wonderful time. Mm -hmm. Yes. For that, for, for those, those areas. Yeah. So, so each of the school has 
the yes. recording and they play yes. it and they right. all the kids. And also yeah. the, the recordings are available on the open market. So oh, yeah. many, many parents and, and grandparents purchase the, <laughs> the recordings for their children. Right. But yeah. fast forward just a mm -hmm. moment since we're talking education, schools and whatnot, to the uh, two Hokulea um, uh, song kits that, okay. um, that we've done. So for, um, we've been involved with the Hokulea voyage and the experience. Since it, practically its inception. Yes. Yes. You know, we were there at the launch and of course we're working with the Hokulea um, project, with the, foundation. the Polynesian Voyaging yes. Society, Society yes. from the early, early days. Um, and then uh, when they took off for Tahiti, uh, then uh, we were involved with the National Geographic um, project to document the trip. And so then we wrote the soundtrack for it uh, when National Geographic made their TV special on the voyage of the Hokulea in mm -hmm. 1977. Yeah. So, so we've been involved. So recently, because of its worldwide journey, we wrote some new songs uh, for children because a lot of times the children are sort of left out of the equation when these big historical and cultural things are going on. So we, what we've been doing is making sure the children actually understand or participate in what's going on. So uh, we wrote some songs and we decided to put them into song kits that can be used by the schools to teach children about Hokulea. And then lo and behold, Hokulea comes after its journey, has come, comes and visits the different communities. They do. And the children know the songs. Mm -hmm. Well, I am glad to know that because, you know, with the voyage when it was coming home and we were all mm -hmm. excited, but my grandchildren kept saying, well, what does that mean? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. You know, those that don't live here. Right. You, right. Yeah, we, we right. the mm -hmm. pictures are great, and we understand that you're excited, but what does right. that mean? Mm -hmm. Right, and that's a good question. So, for instance, on the Polynesian Voyaging Society um, uh, website. website, if you go to curriculum, uh, it shows that songbook. Anyone in the world can get it and um, be mm -hmm. able to read it to learn, you know, what it's, it's all It's downloadable. For. We mm -hmm. did two. One was for preschool level. We're talking about two years old to four years old. And the second is for the um, kindergarten through sixth grade, mm -hmm. really. So it's quite covered in those areas. That's, that is wonderful. Anyone wonderful. can find that on our that website. That is wonderful. Now, mm -hmm. uh, A, I don't get paid for this. So, but this is a plug. This is coming Christmas, and if your grandchildren are like mine mm -hmm. that didn't quite understand what all this was about, I've been yes. following the voyage since the beginning, then I think that is a great Christmas present. Mm -hmm. yes. So how do they get it? All Tell right. us again. Sure. All you have to do is go to our website, which is hawaiikidsmusic.com. Very simple. Hawaiikidsmusic.com. Everything is there. Is that, I, I just made up my mind. That's what they all get. <laughs> Bec simply because they kept saying, well, yes. Grandma, what? what What's this What's all, about? all about? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, yes. What's the excitement? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Especially those in Wisconsin. You know, it's like right. Well, okay. we've reached right. out. We have uh, people from England and from many other countries who come to the website for the information that they want their kids over there to learn all about. Right. So school teachers all over the world mm -hmm. use use it to introduce kids to things in Hawaii. So we have not only that, but the other videos that we have issued, uh, there's Keiki Calabash and Hawaii Kids Calabash DVDs and videos. They're also posted online. So th those are so our songs about our, our island home and our culture here. And so that's been taught all over the world. And you travel all over the world, oh, so people yes. know. Yes. They know when you're coming, they know who you are. Right. By your yes. music. Well, you know, that's well, wonderful to be that's known just one by aspect your music. of our music. Yeah. Because, of course, we do Hawaiian music as well, you know, for, for adults. And, and, um, for, uh, and we also do uh, Waikiki uh, tourists the and, and visitor yeah. Yeah, right, music. And we've also done concerts uh, throughout the U.S. Uh, and in some places around the world. Um, and uh, show, we were what talking did you earlier. do with the London Symphony? We did that in 1979. So this oh, is one you. of the 40th. This is the 40th anniversary of it. Oh really? And that was a symphonic piece that we wrote with a friend of ours from here, um, and it's the first and only Hawaiian uh, symphonic piece ever recorded. 
Well, and sec first, and secondly, ever recorded by the best orchestra in right. the world. Wow. It's called a heroic fantasy, and it was a combination of a famous author, uh, um, artist, artist, John Thomas, and an orchestrator, Jerry Tanner, and the two of us. Ten years in the making, mind you. Mm -hmm. Now, do you put all those artists together for ten years, you're really accomplishing that something. Is, that is, <laughs> my right. goodness, yes. And, uh, so we performed it, what, 50 times here? Yeah, with, with the, the Honolulu, Honolulu Symphony. Honolulu Symphony, yeah. uh, in and then pieces. When, and then when we went to record it, um, we, uh, the record company wanted to use a new process called digital recording. Yes. And so <laughs> they new, hired the Honolulu Symphony, I mean, the London no, Symphony Orchestra to, yes. to do it. So this was not only a breakthrough with Hawaiian music being performed in a symphonic setting, but it was also one of the first digital recordings made. Well, so um, the, since you had used the Hawaiian world, the, mm -hmm. the Hawaiian music, the mm -hmm. Hawaiian everything, so when you transfer that to London, was there a learning process, or did they Not just really. once? Well, symphonic uh, uh, just symphonic musical pieces. Music. It's yeah. just music. Uh, yeah, it's music, yeah. right? But uh, they they do. We we did take some Hawaiian instruments. Right. implements for them to play and things like that but really the symphony orchestra simply read the, the uh, orchestration and, and right. played it. We also had a choir, a 50 voice <laughs> choir that sang with it and so they asked, I mean, they could sing Hawaiian because they sing Italian yes. and, and other you know, uh, 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 Spanish other races, languages, other yeah. languages. But they also asked what kind of English do you want this do for the want? English part? That is, did you want a, a, a British American accent English, or American English. accent? And so they sang it that way. Wow. Yeah. It yes. was fascinating. Yes. So we were able no to... Pigeon? No, no pigeon? No pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, so that was a fabulous experience. So that was a season of the orchestral. We've had seasons of children's music. Well, they were all overlapping, actually. Mm -hmm. So the same year that we recorded with the London Symphony Orchestra, we also released our first children's album called Mokulana, oh, which was uh, a fantasy album and uh, one of those big 12-inch records yeah, with, the, with the book days. that opened up and all yeah. that. So that was the same year. And then we did another project that same year. Again, it all sort of culminated in that <laughs> one year. Uh, and another one called Heartland, which is about our travels across the U.S. America, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. With our band. So, but those are still available? Well, actually, uh, Boy with Goldfish, the uh, London Symphony one, is available, and so is Mokulana. So they are yes, available. Yes, uh, the other the one, answer. Heartland, will be made available again soon because we had to remaster that. Okay. We need to take a break. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when we come back, we'll go for the rest of the okay. journey. Okay. Thank you. Very good. And we'll be right back. Aloha. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough of Sister Power here at Think Tech of IE. And Sister Power is all about motivating, empowering, educating, and inspiring all people. And we have various subjects here. Sister Power is here at Think Tech every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Again, my name is Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Power. We look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at sistersempoweringhawaii at gmail.com. Look forward to chatting with you soon. Aloha. Hi, I am Yukari Kunisue, host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Think Tech Hawaii's Japanese program, broadcasting every Monday from 2 p.m. I usually invite a guest in Japanese language community who does interesting things, and I'd like to share stories with you guys. Please tune in and listen to Konnichiwa Hawaii. Aloha. We are back and we are navigating the journey and my gosh, what a journey <laughs> this is. And I am just so involved in like, how come I don't know? This? How come I didn't have a voyage like this? <laughs> We're with well, Leon. We have our own voyages. Yeah, yes. Leon and Malia. Mm -hmm. And we are celebrating 40 years mm -hmm. of them being this wonderful voice or voices. Yes. Of Hawaii, from mm -hmm. and for and about Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So tell us about 
you know, we, we were talking about the symphony and the, mm -hmm. all of the big music, but when it's just the two of you, mm -hmm. what's the performance like? Do you play instruments? Yes, I play guitar, and Malia and I both sing. And uh, yeah, that, so that's really Leon and Malia at its core. Um, all of the other stuff is production, and, and that's what we've been talking about, the different productions Production, we've yes. done and the, the different compositions we've, uh, we've written. But in the performance, it's really where, where we really enjoy being there because you have a live audience. Malia and I started out in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. uh, I was already singing in Waikiki. Malia came back for kind of a short visit. <laughs> um, she was on her, en route to someplace else, but she got up on stage the first night she was back. She got on stage with me. I asked her to come up and sing a song. The, the owner of the, the, of the, uh, the establishment where the restaurant we were in where were said, you? Can, uh, this is Chuck's cellar oh, I remember on Lewis Chuck's, Street. Yeah, I remember right. Chuck's, yes. Right. Yeah. So the, the owner uh, approached us right after and he said, can you be here every night? You know, and, and I said, well, let me think about it. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. So we were an immediately an immediate group then, and so we had to rehearse and make sure we had, had enough songs right. together to go through the night. But uh, that started out then. Within a few months, uh, we were offered a job at the Purple Onion in San, in San Francisco, Francisco, which is very a world famous place where many many stars got their launch from. Jim mm -hmm. Neighbors, mm -hmm. Phyllis Diller, the mm -hmm. Kingston Trio, right. um, you know the Smothers Brothers, and those. So we were there for a couple of years. Um, we Off worked there a few, few months and then come right. back here for a few right. months and back and forth. Uh, and meanwhile, we're also playing other clubs on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. And this is during the time of the folk era. Right. So, um, so we're playing mostly folk music, but inserting Hawaiian music in there because it's folk music. It is. And it always got some really strong uh, response to yes. it. You know, yeah. People loved it. Uh, so. Um, anyway, so that's what we were doing and um, started recording almost immediately as well. We did our right, first recording right. in Los Angeles in 1970, I think it was. But what was really fun was speaking of performance. So we'd come back and forth from San Francisco uh, once a year for a very big reason, the Diamond Head Crater Concert. Yes. Uh, the festival. Uh -huh. Festivals, yes. Mm -hmm. And so we were there at the very first one and at many other ones. And sometimes we were by ourselves, sometimes we'd have a band with us mm -hmm. and whatnot. But we, it was, you know, you get to be with Linda Ronstadt and all those people from that era. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, that, the concert, how long did it last at the Diamond Head? Now, I can only I'm remember. Not, I'm not really I, sure. Not I, we sure. only played for the first few, maybe right. three or four of them. Because I only went then, once. Uh -huh. Right, because the newer ones, in this, yeah. <laughs> the newer years are quite different from what we uh, yeah, yeah. had when about we the started. Old, the old, old years, ones, yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, they were really enjoyable, and it was quite you know a lot of fun to do that. So we did those kinds of concerts. We did a lot of college concerts on the West Coast, um, mm -hmm. and um, you know, traveling up and down by train. Uh, with our, our group that we had at the time. Uh, and then, of course, we did a lot of work in Los Angeles, uh, part of it with the Hokulea film. But mm -hmm. we also worked on several other film soundtracks and did a lot of recording. Uh, what other there. films did you do? Well, I worked on one called Sail Away, which was um, from, um, anyways, it was an adventure film that down through Mexico. Sea of Cortez. Uh, actually, sea of Cortez. Oh, that sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, it was a sailing uh, feature. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we did a couple of others for National Geographic, because uh, we had started with, with uh, Hokulea, mm -hmm. and then we went back for the Great Whales, and then for this other one called um, uh, the, tig the Tigris. Oh, uh, the Thor Heyerdahl. Yeah, right, the um, Thor Heyerdahl. Yeah, something like right. that. Right. And there, the interesting thing is that we all, uh, those stories, as well as uh, Hokulea and the things about Hawaii, all kind of had some connections. Yes, I was yeah. going to say, mm -hmm. especially Thor. Mm -hmm. Quite, quite yeah. so. Yes. 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 Right. Yeah, he was quite a character. Yes. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so, again, are all of those available? No. No. Oh, well, I believe right. The Voyage of the Hokulea is still yes, available. Available. Yeah, but um, that Sail National Away Geographic. or whatever that I film don't. was. I haven't I, seen that haven't in a long, seen long time. time. We have to look into it. We'll mm -hmm. look into it now we're talking about <laughs> it. Yes. <laughs> now, it would be really interesting, yeah. those even, yeah. yeah. Those are the early days. And then um, we, um, Uncle Tom Moffat booked us on a number of rock concerts at the, what was then the HIC. Yes. 
For the at the HIC. Right, right, right. Yeah. And uh -huh. um, so again, it was quite a contrast, you know. I was going to say do you, our you, folk. You, and yes, yes. 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 So the funny thing was the that sometimes concert, we'd, we'd yes. be would be performing with the Lund with the Honolulu Symphony at the concert hall, mm -hmm. and, and then, then go around the corner. Around the corner next corner evening we'd be in the arena <laughs> right. with Jethro Tull or <laughs> Leon right. Russell or somebody like that. Right, right. Yeah, so, so those were pretty exciting moments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Switching hats, and then, mm -hmm. anyway, it was a great time. And then one other thing I wanted to mention was Territorial Tavern, oh, yeah. which oh, was, of yes. course, you know, the the the, cruise, the, the place where so many it's groups. It's such a came launching of, pad for yeah, here, yes. right? And so uh, we were there very early on. Uh, on one of our trips back, they asked us to headline, and then we kept coming back as we traveled around the U.S. and back and forth. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Booga Booga, of course, and the Beamer Brothers and the Brothers Casimero, of course, Sons of Hawaii was the anchor on Sunday, uh, yes. Sunday Jam. And it was such an incredible time. The music was just flowing and, and developing. So we were just really blessed to be part of that. This modern Hawaiian music, mm -hmm. um, Jay was saying that he doesn't get to hear it. How did Ordinary, I know, ordinary people get to hear this new Hawaiian music. I thought it was everywhere, but Jay says he doesn't get to hear it. Hmm. Well, uh, there are certain stations that play it here, um, and of course there are quite a few concerts going on as well, you know, oh, live yes, performances, yes. And things right. like that. So if Jay would go look at some <laughs> of those uh, Hawaiian concerts, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. right. you see what what I remember of mm -hmm. Waikiki when it was magic mm -hmm. yes. that you could walk. All of the hotels had showrooms, and yes. all of them had Hawaiian yes. entertainment. Yes. Yes. And we would walk down the beach at night and sit out and watch the concerts. Right. Yes. And that's why we also made sure that we did not abandon that part, because yes. that was a very important part of Hawaiian music. It was. And that is what the, what the mm -hmm. visitors heard. And it was also an opportunity to educate visitors about the depth of Hawaiian music. And, and so we were really pleased to be able to do that too. We played the Royal Hawaiian Hotel for years, mm -hmm. uh, the Hilton Hawaiian Village, mm -hmm. Moana. Uh, Moana Hotel, mm -hmm. and and all, most of the hotels Hotel along, along this, with that right. the street on the beach, right. 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 yes. Right. Right. And and we really enjoyed playing for the visitors because it was what we were trying to do is elevate their exposure to Hawaii, yes, right? instead of just what they saw on TV or in the films. And yeah, mm -hmm. but like I said, I, I hated to see that disappear. Yeah. It seemed like it was here, and then one day it was gone. I yes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's faded out. But you know, there are pockets of it here and there. <laughs> but you, you're right; it's not like you can go from one place to the next, right mm -hmm. down the strip, and and hear great Hawaiian great, music. Great, great, great like Hawaiian music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Now, what are you up to? Well, uh, we're, we're <laughs> sort of archiving things right now. We're digging through our archives and finding recordings that we had even forgotten about. And then actually we're bringing them back out and remastering, and we're going to be releasing some of these, but most of them we're going to archive. Um, right, but this coming year we will be really mastering and re-releasing three different um, albums. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, a fine sale. Yeah, and we still have some projects in the works. Uh, we, you know, when we have time, we work on them. Mm -hmm. Now, what the last time I talked to you, you were going to do something at Sea Life Park. Yes. Um, well, that's one well, other thing that mm -hmm. we're looking at. We're talking yeah. About well, that. we we are talking with them because they're right now remodeling a great deal of the park, and they want to put in. Um, uh, what we're looking at is a Finned and Feathered Friends show oh. because we have songs about um, the sea creatures and whatnot, and um, we'd like to get that across. So we're talking about it, so uh, you'll be hearing about it mm -hmm. when we, we know. Say, say the Finned and Feathered? Finned and Feathered, feathered Friends. friends. Right. We're still contemplating. Yeah, we're still contemplating whether we should call it finned and flippered friends. Oh, that's true. Flippered friends. Well, it's in our sea animals. That's true. Yeah. But there are birds. Oh, they have a lot of birds. They have a lot of birds. Yes, they have a big bird display. So that's yes. a possibility, mm -hmm. right? Um, we'll be doing a lot more traveling. Leon uh, travels a great deal. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. as you know, for his that's, work yeah, as well. New, as different well area. as what yes. we do. Yes. yes, yeah. It's always like, well, 
Where when is I he? ask there, yes. well, where is he? Right. <laughs> you know? Or which hat is he wearing? Yeah, That's right. what we should ask. Yes. yes. He wears yeah. so many hats. We, we, you know, everybody knows Leon, and then they remember Leon and Malia yes. as a group. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, do you get to go with him on these journeys? As much as I can, yes, I do. Yeah, but Malia sure is also a music educator. Yes. So, and so I have, um, we have um, a young uh, preschool entertainment program that we came up with. And uh, so I work with the toddler to the five-year-old and um, develop songs and At different and schools. Work At with different them. schools, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's mm -hmm. wonderful because every day there's that innocence and joy and, and just, you know, energy. The, Energy that yeah, the they little kids always, oh, they are. Kids. I know. So you have ones. to get yeah. up to it, you know. But it's wonderful. We have many plans. We'll keep on going. And if anyone's interested, they can um, look at our website. That's what I said, hawaiikidsmusic.com, or go to Facebook. So we have facebook.com, Leon and Malia. Every, like I said, everybody knows Leon and Malia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. And my husband, when I said you were going to be a guest, he said, oh, I remember that. Oh, yes. Right, right. Yes. I hope yes. they all do, yes. yes. Yeah. Anybody that has little children remembers right. Leon mm -hmm. and Malia, right. yes. Right. Well, the, the great thing is that little children know us also yeah. because of the exposure to our music through their schools. Well, also, but the little children have grown up to be yeah. yes, parents that's what I'm saying. and grandparents. Yes. And so, yeah. well... We've influenced just you right. know, generations. So we get, we get uh, letters in the mail that say, uh, I was so influenced by your music, where can I get it? And things like that. So we sent them our website. Uh, but also they're saying how, how profoundly affected they were they as were. children growing up. Right. And so they're how looking for the music. How it made a difference in their lives. But don't we all want to do that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. music does. Yeah. Music mm -hmm. is yes. the whispers of the gods. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yes. it, somehow there is this, these black dots on a piece of paper and then you hear something else you don't hear black dots on a mm -hmm. piece of paper so right. it's just magic yes. it's magic that's it is right magic. that's a good word it is just wonderful and your magic and this has been such a pleasure well, to spend the day us. with you with us mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, sure <laughs> and um, you will come back yes. as your projects move mm -hmm. on yes love to yes yes. Yes. yes and there's so much more I want to ask about all the the music and your archiving and how we can get it and mm -hmm. like so. All right, thank you. Thank you. It's All been right. a and, pleasure. And Godspeed. Okay. Aloha. 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 And we'll see you next time. But in the meantime, um, we have a Halloween party, the Day of the Dead. Saturday, and it is in Hawaii Kai at the Mexican restaurant, and it's the same shopping center where uh, Safeway is. So, the Day of the Dead Halloween party, it's free. Just come and enjoy and have fun. And it's for adults, so the children get to play tomorrow, but this one's for adults. So, again, thank you, and we'll see you next time. Hello.